Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cancer. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of our apoptotic pathways. And specifically in this video, we're going to look at the intrinsic pathway of uh, beginning apoptosis. Okay, so the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis is um, the topic for this video, or just intrinsic apoptosis. Right. Okay, so let me explain how I'm going to structure this video. So, we're going to start off with a study of the um, BCL2 proteins, because those are the essential proteins to understand uh, if you're going to understand the intrinsic apoptosis pathway. Right, what we're then going to see is, uh, after we've looked at all the BCL2 pathways, what we're, well, well, sorry, BCL2 proteins, what we're then going to do is take a step back and look at an entire storyline. So we're going to uh, starting. We're going to start with DNA damage. We're going to see. Remind ourselves of how that activates the p53 protein. We're then going to see how p53 can lead to the activation of the intrinsic apoptosis pathway uh, if uh, the DNA damage doesn't look as though it's going to be repaired. Okay. Uh, and that will lead us through to the full uh, story of intrinsic apoptosis. Okay, so uh, let's begin then by uh, discussing the basics of how intrinsic apoptosis is going to work. So, the key concept that intrinsic apoptosis completely and utterly relies on is the release of cytochrome C from the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. So the mitochondria are the stars of the um, intrinsic apoptosis pathway. So let's have a bit of a reminder of the structure of the, of the mitochondria. And then uh, we'll discuss cytochrome C. Uh, not in too much detail, don't worry. We're not going to go through its involvement in the electron transport chain. But we're just going to have a look at where its location is, usually, in the mitochondria. And then we'll discuss uh, the BCL2 proteins. Okay, so here I've drawn a picture of a mitochondria. So just a little bit of a reminder of the structure of a mitochondria. It has two membranes, two phospholipid bilayers. Here is the outer membrane, outer membrane, and inside is the inner membrane. And I want to stress, because this used to confuse me a long, long time ago, what I used to think um, this was. I used to think that what had happened was the two layers of phospholipids in the phospholipid bilayer had somehow been pulled apart and there was a big space between the two layers. So I thought that the structure of a mitochondria was like this. The outer membrane was a single layer of phospholipids. Then you have this massive space and then the inner membrane was this other layer of phospholipids down here. That is incorrect. That is not what this is. Both these membranes, both the outer and inner membranes, are phospholipid bilayers. So both of them have two layers of lipids, like so. Okay, so uh, don't let that confuse you. And the, even the, well, the theory as to how mitochondria came to be is that um, you had a precursor to a eukaryotic cell, let's say here. And then you had a tiny little, little prokaryotic cell, such as a uh, bacterium here. And basically, what was thought to happen, what, what is believed or speculated to maybe have happened in order to form these mitochondria, is that this larger eukaryotic cell might have phagocytosed the prokaryotic cell. So let's show that happening. So here's the eukaryotic cell. And basically, it's engulfing the prokaryotic cell. And in order to do that, it has to make this sort of uh, phagosome, uh, which is uh, an invagination of the um, cell membrane, in order to surround the prokaryotic cell. So if we then draw what's going to happen next, the, the cell membrane, well, the um, uh, phagosome is going to pinch off, basically. So here's the phagosome. And then we've got the bacteria inside. And that is believed to potentially be the origin of mitochondria, i.e. this inner membrane is the membrane of uh, the bacterium here, this prokaryotic cell. So I'll draw that in pink. So that would be the membrane of the prokaryotic cell here. And then the outer membrane of the mitochondria would be the membrane that the, um, cell, that the eukaryotic cell provided, i.e. the membrane of the phagosome, basically. So that's the inner membrane. 
and then the outer membrane would be this membrane of the phagosome here, so I'll do that in orange. Okay, so that would be this membrane here. Right, so uh, that's just another bit of um, a story to give you some intuition as to what these um, two membranes are. So don't don't make my mistake of thinking that it's um, just that the two leaflets of the phospholipid bilayer have been separated from one another. No, there are two phospholipid bilayers surrounding uh, the mitochondria. Okay, that means that there is this space in between the two phospholipid bilayers, and this space is known as the intermembrane space. Okay, and uh, Importantly for us, when we're discussing intrinsic apoptosis, the intermembrane space is the home for a very important protein known as cytochrome C. So I'll draw that in here. So there's a very important protein in the intermembrane space here. So this is cytochrome C, and let's colour it in red. So let's have it as a little red dot here. Okay, so cytochrome C is extremely important in the electron transport chain of respiration, which is why it's in this intermembrane space. But its other role is in uh, triggering um, apoptosis, basically, because usually cytochrome C is only, absolutely only, present in the intermembrane space. So basically what we can do is we can use cytochrome C leaving the intermembrane space and going into the cytoplasm as a signal for apoptosis and indeed that's the signal for, um, for the activation of the caspases basically and we're going to see what causes um, cytochrome C to be released uh, from uh, the intermembrane space. So, just before we uh, start that, um, let's just finish our anatomy of the mitochondria. So, the space inside, the, the um, volume that's inside the inner mitochondrial membrane is known as the mitochondrial matrix, okay? And finally, the sort of invaginations of the inner membrane into the matrix, those are what are known as cristae. So, this is a cristae, or a crista is the... Um, Crista is the singular, and criste is the plural. So these are, if I join the arrow to multiple ones, then my um, English is correct. Okay, right. Uh, so there's a bit of a revision of the anatomy of the mitochondria. And I've sh told you about how uh, the signal, one of the key signals in intrinsic apoptosis pathway, is this release of cytochrome C from the intermembrane space into the... Um, into the um, cytoplasm of the cell, and that triggers uh, the apoptosis of that cell. Okay, so let's have a look now at the BCL2 proteins, because they're very, very important uh, for, um, for um, allowing the release of cytochrome C. Okay, right, so we're going to study BCL2 proteins next. Right, so there are three major families of BCL2 proteins. Now, uh, we'll start off with what are known as the BH123 um, proteins, or, or the pro-apoptotic um, BH123 proteins. So we'll start off with the pro-apoptotic BH123 proteins. Right, and let me explain to you why they're called uh, BH123 proteins. So, uh, if we study the structure of these proteins, there are certain domains in them which are um, conserved throughout the entire BCL2 family of proteins. Okay, so these domains, if we draw a um, BCL2 protein, most generally like this, then there are uh, what are known as um, four different uh, BCL2 homology domains, which is what BH stands for. Okay, so let me draw them here. Right, so these four little bits that I've drawn here are the four uh, BCL2 homology domains. So we'll have this one in green. Okay, and this is the uh, BCL2 homology domain four. Okay, right, so let me just tell you what BH stands for. It stands for BCL2 homology domain. Okay, so that's what BH stands for. So, um, 
this basically here is the B, uh, BCL2 homology domain 2, so it's just, sorry, 4. Uh, so it's just a uh, conserved portion of protein, a conserved portion sequence of amino acids, basically, in these uh, BCL2 proteins. And what we're going to see is that these BH123 proteins don't actually have that um, homology domain. In fact, the only BCL2 proteins that actually do have all four are what are known as the... Uh, anti-apoptotic uh, BCL2 proteins, which we'll see in a moment. Okay, so let's firstly just go through the rest of these um, BCL2 homology domains, and then we'll talk about the pro-apoptotic BH123. Okay, so this next one is the BCL2 homology domain 3, so BH3. Next along is the um, BH1 domain, so the BCL2 homology domain 1. So this is BH1. Okay, and finally, uh, which we'll have in pink, uh, the um, BCL2 homology domain 2, or the BH2. So these are these um, four different domains which you can have in BCL2 proteins. Now, in the pro-apoptotic BH123 proteins, you have the third, the first, and the second of these BCL2 homology domains. So all of these proteins which are in this class have this homology domain, so they have this one, this one, and this one. They have the first, the second, and the third, which is why they're called, um, they're called uh, BH123 proteins, because they have the first, the second, and the third uh, BH domains. Okay, so this would be the structure of a BH123 protein. It would have these three regions which are conserved, uh, well, these three BCL2 homology regions that are always there in all of them, basically. And these aren't changed. The bits in between can vary, basically, between um, BH123 proteins, but these are always conserved. Okay, so that's why they're called uh, that by that name. Now, let's have a look at the important examples of these pro-apoptotic BH123 proteins. So the important examples are proteins known as BACs and BAC. So these are the two really important uh, BH123 proteins, basically. Okay, so let me tell you about what they're doing and where their position is in the cell. So, if we look at the mitochondria here, let's say this is a mitochondrion here. Okay, so this BAC protein, which is a BH123 protein, uh, so it's pro-apoptotic, it's basically in the outer membrane of the mitochondria. So if I draw the mitochondria here, there's my picture of the mitochondria. This is the outer membrane here, and basically in the outer membrane, you have these BAC proteins. So this is BAC protein. Okay, so what colour should we colour in back? We'll colour it in pink. Right, so back is in pink. Uh, now, there is another, well, we need to now discuss this other BH123 protein, which is Bax. Bax is not in the outer mitochondrial membrane. Instead, it's in the cytoplasm. So here is the Bax protein in the cytoplasm. But, uh, basically, they do the same thing. Bax and back. They may have different starting locations, but they do the same thing. So let's have this one in orange. So this is the Bax protein. Okay, so uh, basically what these two proteins are trying to do is they are trying to form aggregates in the membrane of the, in the outer membrane of the mitochondria. Both of them are trying to form aggregates in the outer membrane of the mitochondria. And when they form aggregates, what happens is they form a channel, basically, in the outer membrane of the mitochondria. And this channel is what's going to allow cytochrome C to leave the inner, inner intermembrane inter space of the mitochondrion and uh, go into the cytoplasm. So basically, you've got these um, pro-apoptotic BH123 proteins, which are the back and the backs protein, which are both trying to aggregate to form uh, this uh, BH123 channel, basically. Okay, so this channel I've drawn here is basically loads of these back proteins and loads of these backs proteins uh, aggregated together. So this is a uh, BH123 aggregate. Okay, and that if, that, if those are allowed to form, what will happen is you will form a channel in the uh, membrane of the mitochondria, 
and this will uh, allow cytochrome C to leave um, the um, in intermembrane space of the mitochondria and go into the cytoplasm. Okay, uh, so you want to try and stop these uh, pro-apoptotic BH123 proteins back and backs from forming these aggregates. Um, okay, so they, they have a tendency basically to form these aggregates. If, they, if nothing stops them, they will form these aggregates, they will form this channel, and cytochrome C will leave the intermembrane space, and that will um, lead to the apoptosis of the cell in ways that we will see later. Right, so back and backs are always trying to uh, lead to the intrinsic pathway of apoptosis being activated. Okay, so we'll continue in the next video and we'll see uh, what proteins are inactivating the backs and back proteins.